Good day everyone, and welcome to Lesson 2 of Module 2 in our Pharmacovigilance Educational Program. I hope you're all ready to explore an essential topic today, ADR reporting for vaccines and its critical role in ensuring vaccine safety in Kenya. Vaccines are indeed powerful tools in preventing infectious diseases, but it's crucial that we closely monitor their safety and efficacy through ADR reporting. So, let's dive right in. First, let's discuss the importance of vaccine safety reporting. Vaccines are among the most successful and cost-effective public health interventions, saving millions of lives annually. However, they may cause adverse reactions in some individuals. That's where ADR reporting comes in. By promptly reporting adverse events associated with vaccination, we can maintain public confidence in vaccination programs and continuously evaluate vaccine safety profiles. Next, we'll explore the process of vaccine safety monitoring. It all begins with pre-licensure clinical trials, where vaccine candidates undergo rigorous testing for safety and efficacy in controlled settings. Once a vaccine is approved for use, post-marketing surveillance monitors its safety in real-world conditions. Here in Kenya, the Pharmacy and Poisons Board PPB, plays a vital role in vaccine safety monitoring and collaborates with us, healthcare providers, to ensure comprehensive reporting and surveillance. Let's examine real-life case studies of adverse events following immunization AEFIs, reported in Kenya. These cases will include both mild and severe reactions, emphasizing the importance of timely and accurate ADR reporting by healthcare providers. The data collected through ADR reporting plays a crucial role in identifying rare or delayed adverse events, allowing us to make informed decisions about vaccine safety. Let's begin with case study 1. We have a six-month-old infant who received the pentavalent vaccine, which protects against diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, hepatitis B, and Haemophilus influenza type B. After vaccination, the parents noticed mild swelling and tenderness at the injection site. Thankfully, the infant did not experience any fever or other systemic symptoms. The healthcare provider at the vaccination center promptly recorded this AEFI and provided appropriate guidance to the parents for home care. The swelling subsided within a few days, and the infant remained healthy. This case demonstrates how even mild AEFIs should be reported to monitor the vaccine's safety profile. Now, let's move on to case study 2, where a two-year-old toddler received the measles, mumps, and rubella MMR, vaccine. Approximately 10 days after vaccination, the child experienced a high fever and had a febrile seizure within a few hours. The parents immediately sought medical attention, and the healthcare provider promptly reported the event to the National Pharmacovigilance Center. The child was closely monitored and fortunately recovered fully without any neurological complications. This case highlights the importance of timely ADR reporting, as it helps healthcare authorities investigate severe AEFIs and take appropriate measures to ensure vaccine safety. Lastly, let's explore case study 3 where a 10-year-old child received the human papillomavirus HPV, vaccine as part of a school-based vaccination program. Approximately two months after vaccination, the child began experiencing leg weakness and difficulty walking. After extensive evaluations, the child was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS, an autoimmune disorder. The healthcare provider who administered the vaccine promptly reported the AEFI, and a thorough investigation was conducted. Although GBS is a rare but known potential adverse event, the timely reporting allowed healthcare authorities to closely monitor any similar cases and provide additional information to the public about the vaccine's risks and benefits. In conclusion, these case studies emphasize the crucial role of ADR reporting in vaccine safety monitoring. As healthcare providers in Kenya, your active participation in identifying and reporting AEFIs, both mild and severe, is vital in maintaining a high standard of vaccine safety and protecting public health. Your dedication to timely and accurate ADR reporting contributes to the continuous improvement of vaccination programs and ensures the well-being of our population.
Let's continue working together to promote patient safety and positively impact public health through robust pharmacovigilance practices. Effective communication about vaccine safety is essential to build and maintain public trust in vaccination programs. We will explore strategies for healthcare providers to communicate vaccine risks and benefits transparently to patients, parents, and the public. We contribute to higher vaccine uptake and community protection by empowering individuals with accurate information. Pharmacovigilance centers, such as the National Pharmacovigilance Center in Kenya, play a central role in ADR reporting and vaccine safety surveillance. These centers collect and analyze ADR data from healthcare providers, ensuring comprehensive vaccine safety monitoring. They also disseminate safety information to healthcare professionals and the public, promoting awareness and vigilance in reporting ADRs. ADR reporting for vaccines may encounter challenges such as underreporting, lack of awareness, and concerns about causality. We will discuss practical solutions to overcome these challenges. 1. Implementing educational initiatives. Education plays a key role in improving ADR reporting for vaccines. Healthcare providers are at the front line of vaccine administration, and it is crucial to equip them with the knowledge and skills needed for effective ADR reporting. By organizing training sessions, workshops, and webinars, we can ensure that healthcare professionals know ADR reporting protocols and understand their role in vaccine safety. 2. Establishing feedback mechanisms. Prompt feedback is essential in any reporting system. By creating user-friendly ADR reporting platforms and acknowledging ADR reports, we can encourage healthcare providers to report adverse events more consistently. Moreover, Providing feedback on the status of their submissions and updates on vaccine safety assessments fosters transparency and strengthens their engagement in the process. 3. Enhancing collaboration. Collaboration between healthcare providers and pharmacovigilance centers is a powerful strategy. We promote an exchange of experiences, knowledge, and insights by fostering open dialogue, regular meetings, and forums. This collaboration empowers healthcare providers to actively participate in pharmacovigilance activities and contribute to comprehensive vaccine safety monitoring. 4. Utilizing technology and digital solutions. Technology can revolutionize ADR reporting for vaccines. Developing mobile applications and digital platforms simplifies the reporting process for healthcare providers, making it more accessible and efficient. Additionally, data analytics and artificial intelligence aid in early detection and risk assessment, providing valuable insights for better decision-making. 5. Public Awareness Campaigns Public awareness plays a crucial role in encouraging ADR reporting not only by healthcare providers but also by patients and caregivers. By launching targeted awareness campaigns, collaborating with media outlets, and engaging with community leaders, we can disseminate accurate information about vaccine safety and the importance of reporting ADRs. 6. Incentives for ADR reporting. Recognizing and incentivizing healthcare providers for their active participation in ADR reporting can further enhance vaccine safety monitoring. Offering incentives like continuing professional development, CPD, credits motivate healthcare providers to report ADRs regularly contributing to a more comprehensive surveillance system. By implementing these practical solutions, Kenya can strengthen its vaccine pharmacovigilance efforts and protect public health. An integrated approach involving us, regulatory authorities, and the general public is crucial for successful ADR reporting and continuous improvement of vaccine safety. In conclusion, ADR reporting is fundamental for maintaining vaccine safety and safeguarding public health. As healthcare providers, our active participation in identifying and reporting AEFIs, be it mild or severe, is vital for the continuous improvement of vaccination programs. I hope you found this lesson informative and enlightening. In our next lesson, we'll delve into ADR reporting for antihypertensive medications, focusing on case studies and best practices in managing adverse reactions related to these essential therapies. 
Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to our next session.